Hello everyone, this is Robert, and today I have a very special guest. This is Luke. He is the builder of the three-pound combat robot, Rumham, which was largely the inspiration for my 30-pound combat robot, Crippling Depression. We're gonna be making a new weapon disc for this, so we're gonna be taking this piece of water jet cut S7 steel and machining a flower pattern into it so it can adapt to the new weapon motor. Let's check it out. So Rumham is an undercutter design it has this weapon here that runs close to the floor and it adapts to the motor. For the new version of Rumham, we have the disc pretty much ready to go, but we still need to put the flower pattern in the new weapon disc. So let's see how it goes. This is the original disc from version one or version two of Rumham, and you can see it has this um, kind of lobed flower pattern similar to what Kamikaze has. And this is the motor that goes with it. The motor just kind of fits down inside of that and it takes all the sheer load off of the screws. Unfortunately, these motors are no longer available, so we have this new motor which has a different pattern on the bottom of it and we will be taking this pattern and machining it into this weapon disc. The first step in getting this pattern machined into the weapon disc is actually figuring out and modeling this pattern. Uh, we asked around, we found a couple people that had some files for us. They sent us a step file. With a little bit of modification, we made this in SOLIDWORKS. The problem is we need to see if this actually fits the motor. So I grabbed the handy laser cutter and we cut out a couple of test patterns just to see if everything would line up. And sure enough, it actually fits quite well. So we know our pattern is good. Here's what the disc looks like in SOLIDWORKS. We have a couple new features here. We got some mounting holes for also for weight savings. And you see that the pattern is centered here in the middle. Because it's centered with this um, central mounting hole that was also cut during the water jet cutting process, we've got our job referenced off of that. So that is our 0, 0, 0 coordinate. It is referenced off the bottom, so we just have to remember that when we set this up on the machine. So let's take a look at the cam. We've got a few operations here. I'll select all of them, go to simulate, and let me take off the tool path. You can see here, let me show the stock. Very good. You can see that we're starting out with a um, bigger end mill. So let me just do this. So we're starting off with a quarter inch end mill and that comes through and does the majority of the material removal. We're doing a full depth cut here and that cuts out the majority of the inside. Then we're gonna come down and cut out with the same quarter inch. We're gonna cut out this little kind of nub for the motor. And then we're switching over to an eighth inch end mill and basically cleaning up these corners right there. And then we're coming through and with a contour pass, we're cleaning up the outside edges. And then I have one more contour that is used to kind of adjust the motor size. Each one of these motors is just slightly different in the size. So this will allow us to kind of open it up little bit by little so that we get a nice tight fit. After that, it's just a matter of piloting these six holes. We got the three on the bottom and then the three on the outside. And once we just kind of do a spot drill on these, we'll take it over to the drill press and actually cut these all the way through. So that's really all there is to it. If we look at the feeds and speeds, I wouldn't really recommend anyone copying my settings. They work, but they're not great. I just kind of threw in some settings. 2500 is the speed. We're cutting at about 10 inches per minute. And if you look at the step over, we're about 25 thou step over and we're leaving about that much as well. And that is for the quarter inch. I think we're doing pretty much the same thing. 2,000, 10 inches per minute and about the same step over for this um, inner cut. And then on the eighth inch, you can see that we're probably doing a little different. We're doing a 5,000 RPM with only a five, just because I'm really worried about this tiny little tool going into tool steel. And then we're doing a um, 12 and a half thou step over. So really, really conservative, just because we don't wanna be breaking a lot of tooling and we're not setting this up for a production run. So this is definitely not optimized. Please comment below if I'm doing any of this wrong, but it seems to cut okay. So um, now let's set up on the mill and get it cutting. 
we're actually cutting two different types of weapons for rum ham. We've got this kind of um, bar, and then we also have the disc that you saw previously. As you saw from the cam, we're using this um, center hole that was actually cut with the water jet. Uh, we just cleared it out with a drill press just to make sure that it's actually an eighth inch all the way through. And we can then use either an end mill or a um, drill bit, like this eighth inch drill bit, and put that through the spindle on the chuck, and then we can use that to get our zero, zero coordinate for the X and the Y. So just having this in the spindle and having this on the table, that will get us the zero for the X and the Y. Then we can clamp this down to the table. And then we're just using a um, one, two, three block in one of the channels on the bed to line up with the outside to make sure it is uh, parallel front to back. Now this really isn't that critical. This whole pattern can really be anywhere on this disc since it's circular it's going to be spinning around the same with the bar we're just trying to get it lined up front to back just so it looks a little bit cleaner and so I mean, everything gets lined up but that's really all there is to the setup we're going to indicate off the table of the mill because the bottom of the part is what we used for the zero reference. So the Z will be on the bottom of the table and then the X and the Y will just be in the center of that hole and that should be good to go for the setup. Getting the weapons set up on the mill was relatively straightforward. Just like I said, I just kind of used the eighth inch bit to get it centered, then clamped it down and then just kind of squared it up with the mill. So that part was pretty straightforward. Good. Sounds good. The first operation is done with the quarter inch end mill and everything looks good. There's a little bit of screeching, but generally speaking, everything looks fine. So we're gonna switch over to the eighth inch. After these final passes, it was just a matter of using the spot drill to spot the six holes, and then that was really it. After the weapon disc was finished, we took it off the machine, checked the fit on the motor, and then swapped it out for the weapon bar instead. We ran the exact same programs on the bar, and I'll just kind of like let you watch some of the machining. We had an opportunity to switch the tripod and switch the camera to a different angle so we got a better view of the cutting. Oh, so that one fits tight? It's nice to have that hole there because I can actually, if it gets stuck, I can pop press it. it. Press it out. There you go. Like your gloves. Is it good? Yep. Okay. So it fits in there, but not loose. Nice. That's good. That's not good. Loose. Cool. All right. And here is what the three finished weapons look like. You can see we've got the same pattern in all three of them. I just spot drilled the um, holes right here for stop it for weight savings and you can see stop it you can see that the motor fits nicely into each one there's just the tiniest bit of play but that'll go away once they warm up and that's pretty much all there is to it so there you have it we just finished machining the s7 tool steel weapons and it turned out great it was a little trickier than we had hoped uh, from the beginning but the end result is fantastic yeah. So this gives you a better idea of what it's like to machine S7 tool steel on a 440 
uh, Tormach machine. It is totally possible. It is not fun. You're not going to have a fun time with this by any means, but it is totally doable, especially for smaller stuff like this. I really don't like dealing with the 1 8 inch end mills. They're always a bit tricky. Um, so if you have any comments on how to get rid of some of the squealing or how to better machine with an 8th inch end mill, let me know. I'm all ears because I'll probably be doing more S7 tool steel in the future, but overall really happy with how these turned out. So as always, thanks for watching. You can check out my Facebook page for more updates on current projects and whatnot. Check out my Patreon page for not only the channels that I support, but also to support my channel. And thanks again for watching. So there you have it. Just finished machining some S7 tool steel and it turned out great. It was a little trickier than you might have initially thought, but we got it done and it turned out fantastic. So. so there you have it. We just finished machining the discs and the barn and it turned out great. Oh, that's it? <laughs> no, I don't know what else to say. So there you have it. We just finished machining the weapon discs out of the S7 tool steel and it turned out great. It was a little trickier than we had hoped, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, the finished product's fantastic. <laughs> that might be the closer.